And joining us now is University of Georgia professor Tam Dallas, a nuclear energy expert and medical correspondent. Dr. Jennifer Ashton is with us once again this morning. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Dallas, let me ask you, I know that you have a colleague at the Tokyo Electric Company, which is the company that runs the Fukushima plant that you've been in contact with. What exactly are they saying over there right now? Because we're getting so many different reports. Well, these 50 people that are still at the reactor uh, complex in the control room, yeah. uh, although they were evacuated last night briefly, and now they're back in apparently, um, yeah, one of them um, had a pretty compelling quote. He said that, uh, I have been irradiated, I'm not afraid to die, and this is my job. And uh, that's a direct quote. Uh, you just got to admire those kind of people. Right now, they are the ones that are preventing this uh, crisis from deteriorating even further. And they really are the last line of defense there. And these people, like you said, they are, seem to be committed to giving their lives in order to protect uh, whatever people they, they possibly can right now. They are. They are the last line of defense. If they're out of there, uh, I, I, I can't imagine, and I've been in contact with a lot of people, a lot of experts, I don't know how they would keep those uh, reactor cores covered if those people get out of there again. All right, let's talk about this situation now. We just saw in Terry McCarthy's report a second ago talking about potential radiation making its way to the West Coast. Is that something that the people of the United States on the West Coast need to be worried about, in your estimation? Well, the good news is right now is that is not a hazard at the, cre at the present time. The people in California can rest easy. Um, uh, the amount of radiation that you're getting now are liable to get in the near future from uh, Japan would be less than you would get in a TSA screen. Okay, it's, it's just not a hazard right now, and I, I, I can't see how that's going to change in the immediate future. The examples that we keep hearing about Chernobyl and with the disaster there um, and with the outreach that it had, can we compare that to what we're seeing now in Japan? Uh, I, I know they've got that, that kind of that security cone around the area. Uh, that's more good news. Uh, I, as you know, I was involved at Chernobyl for 10 years, going in and out of the most highly contaminated areas in the world. And what we learned from that is, and you can see on the map there, that uh, the health effects and the high dose radioactivity, that's about as far as it got. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, most of it was about half of that. And so that's with a hundred times as much radioactivity as the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombs combined released at Chernobyl. At the, Japan, you know, the Japanese situation we're in now, it's much, much less than that. Yeah. So if at Chernobyl we didn't get effects uh, you know, 1,200 miles away, and certainly not in the United States, yeah. then we can be fairly certain that is not going to happen here, even if you get a worst-case scenario there. All right. Uh, Dr. Ashton, let me talk to you about this. About basically, we, we've got reports from, from some store owners calling it almost a panic there with people right. rushing out to buy these potassium iodide pills right now. I mean, is that something? I mean, we're hearing uh, from the professor here that they really don't have much to worry about out there. But what is the deal with these pills? Right, Chris. And we've seen this before. We've seen it with, with many other disasters in this country. We saw it with anthrax and tr people trying to stockpile Cipro with H1N1 and stockpiling Tamiflu. For this particular type of disaster, as all of the experts, including Dr. Dallas, have said there really does not seem to be a need for people in this country to worry about getting KI or potassium iodide pills for this disaster. There has been in the past some debate about people who live within close proximity, 10 to 20 miles of a nuclear plant, having it on hand for an emergency. But for this particular disaster, absolutely not necessary. Could this have been a moral result of the Surgeon General who was in San Francisco yesterday, Regina Benjamin, who basically said this could potentially be a necessary precaution because it seems to be flying off of store right. shelves. And in there. fact, you know, we, we had to call over 20 pharmacies in, in New York City to get this example of potassium iodide pills. So people are panicking. And right now, all experts are saying that is really premature. We have to remember this only protects the thyroid. It doesn't protect the entire body. And only if you will have direct exposure to a source of radiation within 24 hours. So right now, that's really premature. So, Professor, our takeaway here is the people on the West Coast have nothing to be worried about. Yeah, right now, and in the immediate future, I cannot possibly see any scenario that would result in any hazardous levels of radioactivity getting to California unless this thing really deteriorates a lot more than than is even conceivable right now. Okay. Professor Jim Dallas, thank you very much. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, good to see you once again.